Well, good afternoon. Well, it was November 12, 2012, Saturday morning, 9 o'clock. My telephone rings and it made my day. Sophie, thank you so, so much for that important call. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm absolutely delighted and greatly honored for having been selected for this coveted award. I would like to thank CAI Asia, who selected me, and now Clean Air Asia, who is giving me the award. I think I'm getting it right there. Thank you so much. Well, I'd like to thank the jury members, Dr. Mary Jen Ortega, Chairperson of CAI Asia Partnership, Mr. W.C. Mock, Principal Environmental Protection Officer, Hong Kong, Dr. Wang Ta Hung, Associate Professor at the Hong Kong Polytechnical University, Michael Walsh, I was very pleased and very honored to receive the award from you. And Dr. Anamita Rajwadri for the Center for Science and Environment. I fondly remember my nominator, Dr. Vinay Aneja, who is a professor at NC State University, Raleigh, for having nominated me for this award. And also my referees who were kind of gave very good recommendation, I guess. And uh, <clears throat> I like to really thank all of them. It is important as we, I, I we kind of accept in speech, it's so important to remember a few things. I'm still in the mode of giving the Thanksgiving mode. I'm, I'm afraid it'll go for a few more seconds, I guess. As a, as a teaching faculty, I think the key important thing which you are associated with and which really helps you is your grad students. All of us might have been grad students at one time or might be having some grad students right now. And that makes a difference what kind of grad students you get and your work progress in this direction. So today I want to remember some of them, not all of them, to name some, Selesh, Atmida, Uma, Shelley, and many more who have moved out, the young men and women, they did a wonderful job in my laboratory, and they now have moved out wherever they might be. I want to thank them, really, uh, from my heart, because they were the one, and I get all the accolades, I get all the praises, but it is the hard work of those grad students, which I can never forget. As an academician, we all are told, in the beginning of our career, publish or perish. I must say that when I look back and try to see well, it is important, but I think it was more important than some four or five printed pages that goes in the journal is what is more important than that is to able to contribute to the society, to the policy where you can see the change happening. And once you see the change, in fact, that is hugely satisfying than certain number of pages we print and we, ship, we put in a shelf. Uh, I don't know how many people really read that. So that has been really very satisfying because I have been connected with the government, with the policymakers, with the regulatory agency, and there has been a tandem we have been working, including bringing the science in the policy. I think that was a really a, a, a kind of a good happening which happened with me. With this idea, I take this opportunity to urge the most of the researchers here today, old and new, to kind of combine science with policy. I would rather go and suggest it should be well blended cocktail and that would really help the society and also it will be satisfying for you to see the change that probably you want to see from the science towards the, the society and the, and the well-being of the people. I must say that we, were, we have talked a great deal about their quality standards. I was very deeply associated with the air quality standards making process in India. It really took some time, several of, you know, we've talked for some 4,000 meetings in two years. We didn't have the 4,000, but 200 meetings kind of thing in four years, and we were able to come down to the standards. Let me share again that the people with the distinct, different stakeholders, with different professional interests, they were involved, and they would uh, meeting after meeting, we would not arrive on any consensus. It became very difficult. Industry looked at it very differently. The NGOs looked at it differently. As, as a person who was moderating the whole thing, I looked at it differently and trying to do all kinds of matchmaking. That was extremely difficult. But one thing which I understood from the process 
was as long as you can sh you can explain the various stakeholders the air quality relates to public health people tend to understand it people tend to bring the consensus and they tend to agree on the issue in spite of the conflicting professional dress that they might have because of their profession because everyone is a human being everyone has a family everyone has children so the strong linkage which has now been established between the air quality and health that indeed help us to bring a consensus and india now have finally have the very good air quality standard or as many as 12 parameters so that was the experience that we had and uh, now i would like to also share with you that uh, i have talked about the, the work that we have done i think the major issue that we could highlight during our work was uh, reduction in pm 2.5 is, is a big issue we all are talking about that so what we found that well apart from the massive analysis and massive study that we do so supportion and measurement of molecular markers and kind of connected with the dispersion modeling and everything that's really is important there's no doubt about it but when we especially the pm 2.5 for various parameters what we could do is simply put it down on the two columns what are the primary sources and what are the secondary aerosols which have been formed and to our surprise the secondary aerosol contribution in indian cities came out to be anywhere from 45 to 50% in pm 2.5 it was surprising it was an eye opener for us and then we could argue possibly with the with the government with the regulatory bodies that come on no matter what you do from your primary sources even you control them fully unless you control talk about the precursor gases that's ammonia so to uh, to and hot vapors you are going to go nowhere as far as the standards are concerned the government they came forward they are listening to the argument the science that we did made the difference and i'm happy that this discussion has started we are we are right now not controlling so2 and no2 directly from our, our power plants and all but a wall is now rolling for the control of these gases which is so important having said that i want to make another point that well analysis is important both chemical analysis statistical analysis interpretation of the data but it must be followed by action too much of analysis would lead to paralysis and we don't want to be paralyzed it's important that once the analysis is done we need to take action we need to sit down across the board and take the decision that is what is the message that i want to really give to the to the people who do analysis but it have to quickly connect to the action that we need to take well we normally talk about many emerging issues i'm particularly not talking about air quality and climate change the reason is that that will be deliberated in a, uh, in a in a big sense during the deliberation that we have in BAQ and that is being discussed already in my understanding the another issue which is really knocking at the door is the emissions of reactive nitric and more so was the ammonia and ammonia emission is so important because it is increasing at the rapid rate and <clears throat> you can see that the rapid increase in anthropogenic emissions of the ammonia this may lead to photochemical air pollution reduce visibility eutrophication of surface water acidification of the soil and what changes in the biodiversity stratospheric ozone depletion global warming ammonia emissions are related to agricultural activities both the animal farming as well as the application of fertilizers and <clears throat> there are interesting uh, statistics i would like to share with you and over the past few decades the number of domestic animals in the world has increased faster than the human population between 1960 and 2000 while the human population has doubled the number of domestic animals in fact has tripled and the ammonia emissions within india is more than the european union and us put together emission from china is about 1.5 times that of india so this is a little impending problem imminent problem that we need to tackle we need to talk about it we need to sit across the board and quickly take decision on that well as i draw uh, at the end of my talk and uh, so i i i remember the quote of one of the indian environmentalist vandana shiva very small quote of five words but it has a huge meaning and huge importance in today's context 
she says, uh, nature shrinks as the capital grows. I think that's the, we all agree with that. But the time is that if we can grow both nature and the, cap and the capital, that's important. And let's say to ourselves, yes, we can. I'm not violating any copyright violation or something like that when we say, yes, we can. <laughs> yes, we can. So that is what is the, if we can think from our heart, take a decision, yes, we can. Yes, we can do the change. I think this will be the biggest tribute to Kong Ho, the man we all deeply admire. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. Dr. Sharma, could you please stay behind to say that aside from the commemorative plaque that you received, you will also be getting $10,000 from Clean Air Asia and that is a small way of thanking you for doing the research, the analysis, and having policies made and actions done. Let us give Dr. Sharma another round of applause. Thank you very much. Just a, a few announcements. We are really going ahead with our campaign about the Hairy Nose campaign. Please support us, like your Facebook page, Twitter about us. And uh, secondly, we remind you about the Clean Air Awards. Uh, we have some examples here. Please give your nomination to the Secretariat. And lastly, we would not have a successful BAQ without the support of our many sponsors. Uh, We'd like to thank, uh, of course, our co-organizers, Environmental Protection Department and Hong Kong PolyU and our partners, ADB and the